Welcome to the Skies Over Colorado for July 2022. I'm Staff Astronomer John Ensworth of the Cherrywood Observatory, volunteer at the Little Thompson Observatory for Longmont Public Media, this month coming from the Red Feather Lakes Library. Astronomy News. James Webb Space Telescope is still at the top of the first page of the paper as it has been for months and next month we finally will get images to show but the first images are coming in now to scientists um, NASA is not going to show these until July 12th but the NASA Deputy Administrator pa Pam Melroy said the first light images are just fantastic uh, Thomas Zerberchen at NASA uh, said that he was moved nearly to tears by these images Everything's working fine. The main instrument has cooled down to its operational temperature, and we are just having to wait for a few more weeks. Citizen scientists detect dusty disks. So this is an image actually taken by the European Southern Observatory's uh, Atacama large millimeter and submillimeter array. Uh, these gaps in this dusty infrared image are probably where planets are forming. Now, a long-running program called Zooniverse that helped find unusually shaped galaxies and things like that using citizen scientists have come out with Disk Detective 2. You can go create your own account and it'll feed you images and you get to tell the system whether you see stars that have dusty images like this. Again, the human eye and brain can outperform algorithms at this point and they need your help. So in the past, 30,000 members of the public have uh, found over 50,000 disk candidates. So a pretty, pretty big project, and they sure could use your eyes. Wildfire threatened the Kip Peak National Observatory in June. Uh, fire climbed the slopes of the Kip Peak Mountain uh, June 16th. By June 11th, uh, 27,000 acres had uh, burned uh, as of the 22nd. Uh, this is located 55 miles southwest of Tucson, south of Phoenix, about 110 miles. And uh, from that mountain, you can see both uh, light domes of those cities. Uh, there are 20 optical telescopes, two radio dishes up there. One of the optical telescopes is a solar telescope and has been in operation for a very long time. Um, some of the outbuildings were destroyed, a dormitory was destroyed. I got some observing time at this uh, observatory back in the uh, late 80s, and I, was, I stayed in that dorm, so that's kind of sad. Big star parties this month. The 29th Annual Nebraska Scott Star Party, July 24th to the uh, 30th. The Oregon Star Party is July 26th. Stella Fane was a big famous one. It's been going for a very long time in Vermont, uh, starting July 28th. And the Badlands Festival in Rapid City, South Dakota, also in that last few days of July. August has some good shows coming up too. Your Astro 101 lesson for this month is SETI. What is SETI? It's the search for extraterrestrial intelligence and the roots of this go all the way back to Nikola Tesla in 1896. He suggested to listening to signals in the solar system for radio. <coughs> radio was a new thing back then. And he thought he could detect signals uh, in 1899 in a station he set up outside of Colorado Springs. I think the remnants of that station are still visible. Uh, Frank Drake in 1960 from Cornell University launched the first modern SETI experiment in something called Project Ozma. Uh, one of the notable uh, highlights over the years was uh, when Ohio State University using the Big Ear Radio Telescope picked up the WOW signal. Now, this output from the antenna was printed on paper and so you can see here the blanks or ones are a very minimal signal and then it goes up through nine and then goes into the alphabet so e q u j is a very strong signal we have repeatedly looked back at this location in the sky and have not seen anything there 
Later, the Arecibo and then the Allen Array uh, joined in. The Arecibo, of course, is no, now no more. Uh, Breakthrough Listen is in operation fast, uh, the very large array in New Mexico. The UCLA-run Green Bank Telescope, also contributing at times to data. Used to be that you could use your computer uh, to, again, do citizen science, allowing your computer CPU times to look through data at SETI at home. Uh, that has been retired right now. They don't have enough data to feed uh, the system, but the um, Boink um, distributed computing network uh, is doing all sorts of things like protein folding and, uh, experiments and working with general relativity modeling. So you can still uh, use your computer for science. You go to SETI net to uh, see what is still in operation. The sky above your backyard this month in Colorado. <clears throat> I got the moon uh, beginning of the month. So on 4th of July, you will have a, a little sliver in the western sky. If it's clear, it ought to add nicely to fireworks. But July 6th is the first quarter. Mid-month, 13th is our full moon. Third quarter is July 20th. And July 28th, at the very end of the month, is new. If you remember two years ago, at the end of the month, Halloween, that was the full moon. So we've now gone um, halfway through the uh, phases of the moon in, in progression. For the planets this month, uh, really nothing visible in the evening sky at, at, right after sunset. Uh, there's some Kuiper Belt objects labeled on the software there, but uh, nothing really there. Uh, about 10 p.m., around midnight, uh, you'll have the planet Saturn two hours up into the eastern sky, and Neptune is rising just about midnight. So there is Saturn over here, the moon, everything very low at this time. And here is Neptune just coming up. In the morning sky, that's where everybody is located. Saturn rises about eight hours before sunrise, Neptune about six and a half, Mars about five hours before. Jupiter two and a half hours before sunrise, Uranus and Venus two hours before sunrise, so they make a nice close pair. Uh, we have Mercury too close to the sun for much of this month. So that's a traffic jam in the morning sky, but when we get four, five, six months from now, a lot of these planets will be in the evening sky, so it will be really great in the fall. The sun for this uh, month, we have sunrise, and then the first going from 5.35 a.m. Uh, backing up to 5.58 a.m. And the sunset going from 8.31 to 8.13. So we lose about 45 minutes of daylight through this month. For sunspot uh, activity, uh, the 25th solar cycle is underway and we are getting a lot more solar activity than we are expecting. Our predictive value was about 40. We're getting about 96, 97 sunspots uh, running up through May. This is always a month behind. And here's an image of the sun at the beginning of the month. We have a little sunspot coming around the eastern limb here, sunspot about to vanish on the other side. We have evidence of some large sunspots uh, going crazy on the back side because we can see coronal mass ejections using the SOHO Space Telescope. Your feature object for this month are actually two globular clusters in the constellation of Hercules. In previous months, we looked at Arcing to Arcturus off the handle of the Big Dipper. There's Arcturus right there, the constellation of Bootes right there, and then down below to the lower left is the keystone of Hercules. I'll zoom in here. The keystone looks like that. There's the broad shoulders of Hercules, one arm up here, one arm here, narrow waist here. And M13 is over here on this side of his body. Um, it's a pair of magnitude, it's 5.8, so on a really dark night, uh, if you've got good eyes, you should be able to see a tiny fuzzy patch there. That is actually a uh, cluster of stars about 145 light years in diameter over 22,000 light years away. Going up here where the head of Hercules would be is another very nice uh, globular cluster. This is M13 here, here's M92 down here. It's a little dimmer, at magnitude 6.4, and it's a little more distant and slightly smaller at 109 light years in diameter. Your Colorado Observing Challenge for this month 
uh, the Southern Delta Aquarius Meteor Shower. So at the very end of the month, July 29th to 30th, all night long, you can go out and look to the southeast at first and then to the south and then southern sky. Um, right here to the left of Capricorn near Aquarius, these uh, meteors come from a comet that broke up about 9,500 years ago, and this one comet, 96P Macholtz, uh, is the one that has the orbital path that we are going through that is littered with all these little rocks and bits of dust that are burning up in the atmosphere. This year, the uh, meteor shower is very close to the new moon, so you should be able to see even the fainter meteors. Astronomy events near Longmont this month. Uh, the Longmont Astronomical Society does not yet have their July speaker uh, posted, so you'll have to go to check their website on that. But they do have their star party night at the uh, Rabbit uh, Mountain Observing location, July 8th, running from 8 p.m. to 10. They have to get later and later as the uh, days get longer. Little Thompson Observatory in Bertha it is closed for its normal July maintenance. They will be picking up again with group meetings. No word yet on bringing back the um, open house nights on the third Friday. Estes Park Memorial Observatory has a open, no open public nights either, but they are still accepting uh, 12 people or less reservations for Friday, Saturday, Sundays, and Mondays. See their websites for that information. Northern Colorado Astronomical Society, July 7th via webcast, we'll have Dr. Paul Bennett talking about star clusters. The Fisk Planetarium at University of Colorado Boulder has reopened mid-June. Um, check their site for show times. There's a lot of shows they have running now. And the observatory on campus will have observing nights on July 1st, 8th, 15th, 22nd, and 29th, and August 5th. And finally, the historical missteps in astronomy for this month is a concept called modified Newtonian gravity. Vera Rubin, working at the Carnegie Institute in the 60s and 70s, was taking a look at the speed the galaxies rotate and other astronomers were taking a look at the speed the galaxies move through clusters of galaxies and they found that they are moving too quickly. Galaxies should fly apart and galaxy clusters should fall apart very quickly. But they don't and so it looked like some other material, some unseen matter now called dark matter because we don't know what it is, um, is present to keep everything held together like that. Uh, dark matter also does not interact with electromagnetic um, light or energy and so it is doesn't block anything from behind it's completely transparent um, that also we don't know what that is we're looking at the subatomic particles and a lot of different theories to try to explain that and don't have a good hold on that yet because of this ambiguity some astronomers are trying to throw away the idea of dark matter being the solution to these uh, this mass problem. For instance, our galaxy has about 10 times the amount of dark matter by mass than it does visible stars, dust, planets, and things like that. So they have come up with the idea of modifying Newton's laws, saying on a large scale you need a different equation to explain uh, gravity. Uh, there's a lot of problems that arise with that. Um, for one, one of the best uh, MOND, Modified Newtonian Gravity Models, uh, actually has to put some dark matter back in to still explain the motions of things on the largest scales. So per tests are being proposed to try to see if we can do without the concept of dark matter, while other astronomers and physicists are looking for what dark matter might actually be. If you have any additions or corrections, suggestions, please email me at johnensworth at gmail.com. This has been the Skies Over Colorado, July 2022. Keep looking up.